I'm gonna give you my recommendations on how to load out your Aegis Hammerhead and we're starting right now. Aegis Combat Assist activated. Systems green. Thank you so much to all the supporters that make this channel possible. What's up citizens, this is Subliminal here and in this Star Citizens loadout guide, we'll discuss my recommendations for both weapons and components for your Aegis Hammerhead. Our primary goal will be a multi-purpose one that will excel at both PvE and PvP combat. The Hammerhead Buyer's Guide will be coming soon, so make sure you're subscribed and have the bell clicked. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. The Hammerhead is an armored gunship used by the UEE as a fleet screen and patrol spacecraft. I'm not sure what a fleet screen is, but we're gonna load this thing out to f some shit up in the verse. This loadout is going to beef up your shields and maximize our damage potential. Now that we understand the objective of this build, let's take a look at its components. We'll start with the power plant that generates power for our weapons and other components. The standard power plant on the Hammerhead is the Size 3 Grade C Military Class Superdrive. If you follow my channel, you'll know that extra power gives zero performance benefits. So I usually recommend stealth components if they can handle the rest of the build. But well, let's just say that stealth is an uphill battle in the hammerhead that you can't win. What's awesome is the stock power plants have enough power draw for the upgraded build. So you can save yourself the 280,000 alpha UEC of buying two JS 500s. There is no difference even when fully overclocked. Let's discuss its coolers. These cool your weapons and components after they've overheated. The standard coolers on the Hammerhead are the size 3 Grade C Military Class Mercury Coolers. I can't stress this enough, you do not need to upgrade these either. Same as the power plant, there is no benefit to having extra cooling. These stock coolers can handle fully overclocked weapons and shields. Buying chill maxes will not yield you any benefit. Save that 600,000 off of UEC and buy another spaceship. For a full explanation on how power plants and coolers work, check out my components guide playlist here. Now for its shield generators that protect our ship and these components. The Hammerhead stock shield generators are the size 3 grade C industrial class stronghold shield generators. These have a hefty amount of shield pull, but they take twice as long to start regening and twice as long to regenerate once they've started. So I'll be replacing these with the great all around FR-86s. An FR-86 is grade A, military class, with an HP pull of over 76,000, a 4300 HP per second regen rate, blocks a minimum of 50% ballistic fire, has a 0 second damage delay, a 40 second down delay, and a 3 second request time. This will actually lower our overall shield pool, however, the FR-86's quick regen paired with a 0 second damage delay will allow you to take sustained damage for a longer period of time, even longer than that of a parapet. Do not use a parapet, you've been warned. And lastly, the quantum drive that will help you get to the stores that sell these components faster. The standard QT drive on the Hammerhead is the size 3 grade C industrial class comma. Let me make this clear. The comma stinks like Osama. Get rid of it. We're not trying to bend the fabric of space and time and get to the pyro system right now. I recommend adding the fastest size 3 drive and that's the TS2. The TS2 is grade A, military class, has a 208 megameter per second quantum speed, a 142 per megameter fuel requirement, a 0.43 second spool up, and a 13 second cool down time. The TS2 is capable of making the furthest jump possible within the Stanton system and have a little bit to spare. All of the components I recommend can be found at Microtech at New Babbage's Omega Pro. Before we get to weapons, there's a really good chance if you're watching this video, this loadout could be obsolete. To fix this, I've added my loadouts to subliminalchannel.tv. Here you can see the last date I revisited the build, there's context for my decisions, links to the DPS calculator, and honorable mentions. If you'd like to discuss ship builds further, join the channel Discord. There are over 3,000 citizens there who like to discuss ships, components, weapons, and more. Links in the description. We've added a new ship to the Vessels of the Verse collection. Get your free mobile wallpapers and emotes. There's a new desktop wallpaper for subclub members, and there's merch available as well. For display, make sure you use and bookmark my link in the description. It's the only way to support the channel. Now, let's talk about its stock weapons and my recommendations. The Aegis Hammerhead does not have pilot weapons. However, it does have six massive turrets, each holding a pair of CF-447 Rhino laser repeaters. One Rhino does 159 alpha damage times 250 RPM 
for a total of 660 DPS and a 4,000 meter range. These weapons have infinite ammo, pack a punch, and have the farthest range in their class. What more do you need for a 7-man wrecking crew? Typically, I recommend overclocking weapons, but the cooldown ratio is terrible with the size 4s. I recommend CF series all the way around, however, I'm going to switch it up just a little bit for the top turret. Here I'm going to add a quad array of C788 ballistic cannons. One C788 does 731 alpha damage times 53 RPM for a total of 646 DPS and a 3200 meter range. What makes these cannons special is their splash damage, causing damage to multiple shield facings and parts of the hull, as well as causing smaller ships to hit some turbulence. They are also ballistic so they can penetrate shields. The only downside is no infinite ammo and a slightly shorter range. However, 480 rounds at 53 shots per minute is around 9 minutes of continuous fire, so not that big of a deal, especially if you wait until unsuspecting enemies get close before firing. The overclock fire rate and damage buff shown on Urkel is in the game's data, but it's not activated, so there's no need to overclock these. The Hammerhead has 6 MSD 543 missile racks, each holding 4 Viper 3s or 4 Arrestor 3s. The Arrestor 3s are actually decent missiles. I recommend keeping these. However, for the Viper 3 missile racks, I'm going to swap them out completely for MSD 515 racks and add Stalker 5 torpedoes to each of them. One Stalker 5 is cross section, does about 21,000 damage, has a 2.3 second lock time, a minimum lock range of 1750, and a 31,000 meter tracking distance. This is great for helping take down Idris's in the Arlington Gang missions or the upcoming Xenothreat Dynamic missions. Also, it's nice to use it sparingly against fleeing targets or those pesky bombers like the Eclipse and Tally. An honorable mention would be to replace a few of the 5.4.3s with 5.8.2s and have a bunch of size 2 missiles to spam at light fighters. All of the weapons we discussed here can be found at Microtech at New Babbage's Center Mass. You've got to pay to play here boys, if you don't have around 468,000 off of UEC to buy this entire build all at once, I would buy them in the following order. The most important things here are the quantum drive and shields. And rejoice, because if you didn't upgrade the coolers or power plant, you saved yourself around a million off of UEC. Alright, let's talk about stealth. Actually, on second thought, scratch that. New development in stealth meta. For every new subscriber we get, your IR will drop by one point. I hope you've enjoyed this loadout guide of the Hammerhead. I'd love to hear about yours down in the comments. My full review of the Hammerhead will be coming soon, so make sure you're subscribed and have the bell clicked. If you enjoy my channel, there are so many ways to support it, ranging from free options like Prime Gaming subscriptions and sending out the UEC in the verse, sub club subscriptions, merch, to more generous forms of support. Head over to subliminalschannel.tv to learn how. Your support in all forms makes this channel possible. Even your viewership, liking, and subscribing goes a long way. To continue watching, here's a video I think you may like. Here's a video YouTube thinks you may like, and until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.